Last year, two pilots that I know took the exact same Part 107 exam. Similar passing scores, exact same drone. Six months later, one of them is charging 150 bucks for real estate shoots on the weekends. The other one just signed a large annual contract with a construction company. The difference? It has nothing to do with flying skills. In 2026, getting your drone license is like getting your driver's license. It just means you are following the law. As far as making actual money, that requires something completely different that nobody seems to talk about. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the complete 2026 licensing process, including new regulations that changed this year that will trip you up if you're watching old videos. And even more importantly, I'm revealing what I call the value creation a six-step system that separates broke drone pilots from six-figure operators. And before we dive in or take off, if you're serious about turning this into a real business for yourself and not just a side hobby, hit that subscribe button right now. I'm dropping a new video in this series every week about how to go from a new pilot to a full-time business owner. All right, let's get the bureaucracy out of the way fast. Step one is you need an FTN, your FAA tracking number. This is literally your pilot ID for life. Go to crud.gov and the link will be in the description and register as an applicant. It takes five minutes. But here's a mistake that you should double check that can cost you months if you get it wrong. Double check that your legal name and address match your ID exactly. One typo, your physical certificate gets delayed and certain clients won't even talk to you without seeing that card. Step two, the exam itself. It's 60 questions requires it 70% to pass and costs about $175. But here's what changed in 2026 that no one's talking about yet. The FAA completely overhauled the emphasis area and you're now getting hammered on three things. Remote ID compliance, which is now mandatory for almost every commercial application. Category one through four, operations over people. This is huge if you wanna work events or do inspection and enhanced airspace authorization procedures. If you're studying a guide from 2023 or even 2024, you're studying for the wrong test. I'm going to link updated resources below, give you a study tip that will help you pass. Now starting to do things like combining the ro remote idea with airspace questions. This is designed to fail people who memorize answers without understanding the why. So as you're doing your studying, make sure that you understand the why behind these different concepts because rote memorization is gonna trip you up. If you wanna know where 80% of people get tripped up, it's on airspace. These aviation charts can look like a toddler attacked a map with markers, but once you crack the code, you realize it's actually brilliant. This is a place where old study guides can definitely be helpful because those airspace questions are gonna be, you know, true or false no matter what year we're in. And I encourage you to spend extra time on this. Confession, first time I took the test, I failed. I went in there thinking I had enough of it figured out. I could, you know, work my way through logic, through enough of the questions, and I was wrong. And that's annoying because, well, I, I don't like being wrong. Also, it's a waste of time and energy and money, obviously. So if you want to get this sucker your first time through, just make sure you take time to understand those basics. I'd also recommend spending extra time on the weather. And if you'd like to test your skills with some multiple choice, check out the Part 107 study quiz videos on this channel. It's a great way to test your own knowledge. And all of this is really important because it's important to understand real life scenarios. If a client asks you, can you fly here? You want to be able to figure out the answer. And one principle that you do need to understand right now has to do with the FAA's new Lance system. So basically knowing that controlled airspace isn't necessarily a no-fly zone. It's an ask permission zone. The new system can give you authorization in some class B and C airspace in literally 90 seconds, but you need to know which grids are Lance eligible and which require manual authorization that can take five days. If you don't know the differences here before you bid a job, you may well lose it. Now, fortunately, resources for all of this are available readily online. Most of it's free, including on the FAA site. And again, I'll link below. All of this will make more sense once you start poking around, understanding the different classifications and putting them in your thinker. Okay. Real talk moment, I need to destroy a myth that's keeping pilots broke. Your clients do not care about your flying skills. They don't care about your drone. They don't care about 4K versus 6K. They care about one thing. Will you solve their problem without creating more problems? Golden rule of life. I heard this said by a very successful drone pilot who makes over $150,000 a year in his drone business. He said, clients aren't hiring drone pilots. They're hiring someone they can trust on a half million dollar construction. Think about it. 
you're gonna be walking around active sites with heavy machinery, expensive equipment, and strict safety regulations. The site supervisor doesn't care if you can do a sick reveal shot, cares if you're gonna show up on time, follow safety protocols, and deliver data he can actually use, he or she. This is why I see pilots with $10,000 drones sitting at home while pilots with $600 Mini 3 Pros are booked solid. It's not the gear, it's communication. It's speaking their language and giving them the outcome they want. For example, a real estate agent doesn't want 4K, 60 FPS with D-log color grading. She wants footage that makes the home sell faster. A construction manager doesn't want ortho mosaic map. He wants proof that the contractor actually moved the dirt that they said they did. In the drone launch box, which is linked below, you'll receive all of the templates and scripts that you would need to get these sorts of clients and show them that you're the person who can provide this for them. But the principle is this translate your technical skills into business outcomes that they care about. All right, here's a framework that changed everything for me. I call it the value creation circle. And this is why most licensed pilots never make money. Most pilots think that the business is just step four, which is fly your drone. So they get licensed, buy the gear, and sitting around for someone to magically hire them. Doesn't happen. A real drone business is actually six steps. Step one, identify the problem, not who needs drone footage, but who is losing money or time because they don't have aerial data? Construction companies guessing stockpile volumes. Solar companies paying people to climb up on roofs. Insurance adjusters waiting weeks for a roof report. Step two is marketing. How do they find you? Who is looking for you to give you money and how can they find you? We'll cover this in the next video, but hint, most of the time it's not Instagram. Step three is sales. Can you have a 15 minute conversation that ends with, when can you start? instead of, let me think about it. Leading with the outcome, not the how. Step four, data capture. This is where the money lives. Raw drone footage doesn't usually have a high dollar value, unless that's what they want. But that same footage processed into 3D modeling that can save a contractor $5,000 in surveying costs, you can charge $800 for that. And step six, delivery. Sending a Google Drive via email versus showing up to the office with a printed report in a folder, different perceived value, different price. And of course, all of those can really vary greatly depending on what it is they're looking for. You know, if you're just doing a construction report and they want that raw data every month, that's delivering the value they want. But taking that extra step to increase the perceived value through greater communication, higher quality deliverables, etc., that's where you can really stick out in people's minds. But here's where you are right now. You know the licensing process. You know, you got to check off some things online, you have to go through the content for the test, prepare for it, understand the why behind it, and be able to pass with the 70%. And I know this can seem intimidating, but I encourage you to just spend two weeks learning it and schedule that test. You don't wanna wait forever. Don't let this be the limiting step. If I can do it in two tries, you can do it in one. And if not, you can be in the two try club with me. Either way, you're moving closer to your goal. You also now understand it's not just about flying and you've seen there's an actual system to making money with this. So your next move is this, get licensed, schedule that test, use the free resources I've linked below and make sure you're paying special attention to things that were updated for 2026. And if you want a break from studying and actually working on your business, I encourage you to check out the drone launch box. This is the resource that I wish I had when I started. Client script templates, outlines, and resources for how to position your drone business so that you are the local drone person to call whatever niche it is that you choose. If this video made the licensing process click for you at least a little bit, tap that like button right now. It tells YouTube to show this to other people who are serious about their drone business, not just flying for a hobby. And subscribe because next week I'm releasing the next video in the series. That will be the 20 minute business setup. All the things you need to do to be legal and pay your taxes. It's important to set up your business correctly. And no, you don't need to go through something like LegalZoom. If you have a moment, drop a comment below. What's your biggest fear about starting a drone business? I read every single one and I'll do my best to address that in the next video. I'm Sarah and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you have time to fly today.